Okay, here we go. Round two. Tag two. If you guys are just tuning in right now, I uh, we recorded probably about 35, 40 minutes of, of the podcast, and uh, the computer died must have been like five seconds ago, or five seconds into the podcast, so we deleted pretty much the entire chat, which is great. Yeah. It's professional right here. <laughs> professional right here. First podcast. <laughs> I haven't done a podcast in about seven months, so you guys oh, got to okay. bear with yeah. me. Yeah, yeah that's my bad. <laughs> Welcome Let's to the podcast. Go Thanks, it's about time. Yeah. <laughs> you said the same. I know. <laughs> All right, so I'll do some rapid fire questions to kick uh, off. Yeah. Different questions this time. All right. Um, okay. But first, full name. Uh, Stephen Noel Carroll. Do you want to tell all about the no, Christmas name? No, it's all right. Um, I have a very Christmas name that my wife only kind of acknowledged about last year, the year before. So St. Stephen is the day after Christmas, and that's my first name. Uh, Noel or Noel, as you say over here, uh, Father Christmas, that's uh, Santa, and then Carol, it's Christmas Carol. So, you know, I have a very, very Christmassy festive name um, that but I never realized. I, but you ruin it by saying Noel versus yeah, Noel. Noel, Noel, yes. Yeah, spelled the same, we just say Noel, which is weird. Okay. I never, I never thought it was weird until someone pointed out and was like, well, yeah. it's not, well, whatever. Yeah, I, I, watching the Great British Bake Off, the <laughs> the uh, host is Noel, and is I it? always say Noel. Yeah, that's the thing. I have English. Of, oh, yeah, I have a couple of people I, that their first name is Noel and they, they say Noel. Like, yeah. So, yeah. I, love, I love the Great British Bake Off. Yeah. Maybe I love it. I watch <laughs> that's it all a time. weird, weird thing to be loved. Like, I no. think. Uh, I, uh, she was like, you got to watch this. It's a really good no, series. No, like Gordon Ramsay chopped or anything like that. Like, no, no just, just. I love it. British it it just off. reminds me of like, like just coziness off. It's usually the new seasons and off season. So oh. it's like, watch that. It's the best, man. Fair. I love it. I get so into it. But when I first started, <laughs> so like, into it. I'm like, this is stupid. I mean, I don't want to watch it. And then all of a sudden, like three episodes in, I'm like, oh, the puff pastry is terrible. How do you, <laughs> how do you mess up puff pastry? <laughs> yeah, you kind of, yeah, you get judgmental after a while, I feel like. Mm-hmm. All right, so age. I'm 30 years old. I'll be 31 this this year. When's your birthday? November 30th. November 30th, okay. 93. Next, next to Antoine, I think. Yeah, I think I am. Okay. Yeah. I always remember Antoine's birthday. What was it? Uh, I don't remember. Yeah, I always remember Hans <laughs> Hans Hans. What was it actually? Uh, said it position. Uh, center back. Okay. Center. Um, preferred foot. Uh, right foot. Which, Definitely right foot. Which, no, no left. Foot. <laughs> it's just for standing, and with all the surgeries and that knee, it's like you know, it's better off just for standing. So. Mm-hmm. And then, which player do you watch that you like to try to emulate? Um, as a kid, or it could be now. It, as a kid, it was like the old school, like like John Terry, Rio Ferdinand. Vintage situation. I don't really watch uh, that much centre backs these days because that wasn't how I grew up playing centre back. Because mm-hmm. it's a different ball game altogether these days. You got to be a, a ball playing centre back these days to be much. And I kind of pride myself on like the physical stuff when I was younger. So mm-hmm. it was those kind of guys. You know, the guys, the hard nose, big mm-hmm. tacklers. You know, tough guys. Like yeah. Did you think you were tough? No. <laughs> I just said I just put a, I was also skinny when I was younger so like it was kind of hard but I loved it. I loved a good tackle if it was from me or against me or even like watching players on the team were just like it's good hard tackle and it's mm-hmm. like yeah that's, that's that's just as good as scoring a goal for me kind of thing. what's your opinion on on the way the modern game's gone now do you miss the the hard tackles are you one of those people or are you one of the like you appreciate the ball playing and the technical side oh yeah I definitely appreciate it because I understand how difficult it is to do all mm-hmm. that stuff but you know the modern day center back now is almost like the old day center mid like you have to be the guy that creates the players also stop plays kind of mm-hmm. thing like it's it's a lot more involved in that sense usually when I was growing up it was like you win the ball give it to your playmakers give it your center mids who are supposed to be like the guys who make everything happen and everything mm-hmm. like but nowadays it's it's a lot different it's it starts from the center backs basically to go through but yeah like I'm, i do think it's gone soft you know watching the prem sometimes and yeah. var and all that stuff and i'm not gonna get into that controversial situation <laughs> but some of the tackles are like wow that's like that's so clean that's so that's so normal that like it's like it's not normal anymore. It's, like, oh, it's, it's a like, dangerous play. Dangerous, like, and obviously people who get tackled, usually, like, I would like to see them more. They just like get up and get out. And goes, okay, I got hit. Like, that's fine, mm-hmm. whatever. But now it's always like, oh, I broke my ankle. Yeah, kind yeah. of thing. Like, happened to me in the other day actually in Colorado. I was like, I could play off like this bad tackle now. As like this guy broke my ankle, or I can get up and not be a little mm-hmm. whatever about it. Uh, and I was just so angry that the guy actually flew in like that that I. Just, almost try to square up to him I was like that's not a good idea either. so I didn't know what to do with that yeah. Thing, but yeah it's the modern day is definitely 
definitely a lot more challenging. Yeah. You yeah. gotta be a lot more cuter, you know, mm -hmm. with stuff. Savvy, all that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah, for sure. Um, which team do you support? The Prem? Uh, United. United. Yeah. It's we tough. had a glory days. I was, yeah. I grew up in the glory days. Yeah, kind of yeah. Thing, so yeah, it's, it's tough watches these days. But. Yeah. But you know, they always can come back. No, they will. They will. I mean, something has to change. It's the biggest club in England, if not the world. Do you world. think the change has to, I mean, obviously we don't know, but yeah. do you think the change has to happen at the team level or higher up? Uh, higher up for sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, now Ineos and Daniel Radcliffe is taking over. Um, I think they're making changes, so we'll see what happens. Yeah. We always say they always pump money in for the last 10 years and nothing comes of it. So, you know, it just take it with a grain of salt, I suppose, yeah. and see how it goes. It's the hope that kills you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> every week is like, ah, oh, no. I've been there, man. Arsenal, that's the hope that kills yeah, you. Exactly, every, yeah, exactly. Every time. Um, okay, awesome. So, that rap oh, one last rapid fire question, yeah. actually. Let's say you're on death row. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Did something really bad. Okay. But you get your last meal. Oh, what, what would that be? This is going to be no shock to anyone, but it's going to be a cheesesteak. Cheesesteak. Yeah, I'm a like big a Philly, cheese Philly cheese steak. I'm a big sandwich guy. Anyone, anyone asks me in the field house for the last five years, you mm -hmm. know, Jack asks us every year, what's our favorite food? And I just put down sandwiches, man. Just give me a sandwich. <laughs> Any kind of sandwich you make, I'll, I'll smash that. That's yeah. the... It's the Last weirdest thing I, thing I would want. <laughs> I know. I just love sandwiches. Do you, weird, do, you want right? eat, do you want to eat sides with it? Do you want fruit? Oh, mac and cheese, obviously. Mac and cheese. Yeah. Like a lobster mac or just no, classic? No, just classic mac and cheese. Man. Okay. Yeah. I'm big, easy to please. Then. Easy to please. Like, I'm not picky. I'm not picky either, like per se, but it's just like those things are just comfort food. Like yeah. you know, very filling and tasty. Okay. And a drink? <laughs> drink. A Guinness? Oh, kind of. Oh, are we going alcohol then? It's Whatever different. you want. What's well, your last meal? I would definitely have a Guinness. Yeah. But I would also like a can of Coke. <laughs> okay. A can of Coke. A can of Coke. Yeah. I, I always have like once a month, it's like on an off day or whatever, like my fast food meal. Yeah. And I'll have like a so, it full on soda. Only once Big a month? Mac. Yeah. Probably only once a month. I have, like, I have like a cheat snack every probably four or five nights yeah. out of the week, like a bowl of ice cream, cookies, whatever. Really? But only once a month, I go off the deep end and have one huge McDonald's wing stop meal with a full sugar Coke, like all that. Oh, wow. I'm, we are definitely different. Aren't we? <laughs> I get that like once a week, like if not twice a week. Okay. Situation. Yeah, well, I, some of us are pros and other people. Yeah, you know? I know. This is like the most pro I've been in my whole life this year. Like, and it's, it's killing me. Like the off yeah. season, I was killing me. I came back from Ireland in December and I was just, I just felt large. And I just like, <laughs> I just like, I do something about it. Chicken, rice and vegetables, proteins, like just straight water. So the yeah. whole month of January and into February, I was like, wow, I feel great, mm -hmm. but I'm just Mentally. sick and tired of eating the same thing over yeah, and over yeah. again. It was terrible. Uh, I mean, it is, there is something to, um, the mental side of doing and, and appeasing that like yeah. side of you that yeah. needs to have that. Because yeah. if you go too strict for too long and then you, you can only go so long until you go off the deep end. With yeah, whatever it is. Just just ask a couple of Reese or anyone on the team, and they don't know how I still play it with my diet and season. It's like I, I, just give me any food. Yeah, I'm just you know, I've heard you don't want to cook. Big Max, it is. That's all right. Let's I, go. I think it was Rutz said that you and Matt Lewis eat like toddlers. No, no, that's that's just a terrible thing to Rutsy say. Matt <laughs> Lewis eats like a toddler. He's a, he's a chicken tenders and fries kind of guy. Like uh -huh, uh -huh. that's it. Like uh, and tacos. He's just weak for tacos. But me, like. Like I eat like like I said, Philly cheesesteak, mac and cheese, be very satisfied with that. But like I eat everything. Like I eat seafood, I eat whatever. Do you like, like vegetables? Uh yeah, I'll eat, I'll eat vegetables, but like realistically I don't put them on my plate. But like okay. it's not as if I don't like them, it's just like I could put more other stuff on my plate right uh -huh. now, you know. I'll get two scoops of mac and cheese instead of them, <laughs> one and vegetables kind of thing. Like but no, Rotti always says that, he always says I eat like a child. It's like I don't know how he says that because I eat everything he eats. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. I guess. We'll see. But so Matt Lewis is catching strays then. Oh, well, he deservedly, he he deservedly <laughs> so. Like he's, he's, if it's not a taco, then he's probably not eating it. Like it's weird. <laughs> he loves tacos so much. Like That's funny. Uh, okay. So uh, now we'll go into like what we've experienced about an hour ago. Yeah. This going through We're your story. We're just prep talking it through. Like, yeah. Getting it yeah. done. So born and raised in Cork. Yes. Balling College Cork. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we'll do all the uh, expedited version this yeah. time. Yeah. Right. Um, but then you played for local uh, uh, club teams yeah. in Cork. Yeah. So Wilton, I was Wilton and, and Ballon College, then back to Wilton by the age of 16. Uh -huh. And then uh, from from then I got picked up by Cork City's Academy on the 19th team, mm -hmm. um, uh, 16, 17, whatever. Um, 
then that gave me the opportunity to try and get on the first team, uh, which I, I, I took for that one year. So I was on the bench for a couple of games in, in the Irish Prem and played the cup games and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I was only young at the time. I didn't have like a full paid contract yet, but mm. I was, had all the amenities of it. Like, you know, like I said, I've been in FIFA, like a uh, football manager, been taken out of school to go to games kind mm. of thing. Like it was, it was a fun time and I really thought I was going to make it big that time. Like, mm. but yeah. And your dad had punched a, a pretty famous. Oh yeah. Yeah. That one. Yeah. My dad played soccer until he was probably, I think, I think he got hurt at 16, maybe 17, but he, in his teens anyway, late teens, he was playing. He played with Dennis Irwin because they lived next door to each other. And Dennis Irwin was obviously a defender. My dad was a striker. He had to play centre back one day. He was so useless at it <laughs> that, yeah, Dennis Irwin kept chirping him, chirping him, chirping him. And then my dad just turned on, punched him right in the nose, broke his nose. And he was on the same team, obviously, wherever. And then obviously Dennis Irwin went on to being the best right back in United history. And then my dad uh, blew out his knee and never played again. <laughs> so. <laughs> It, is it funny. seems about right. It'd be funny watching that and be like, "Yeah, punch that guy." In the yeah, face. yeah. He's he used to tell me that when I was young, and then he used to be like, "So like, I'm not embarrassed about it." But he's like, "Don't be telling people that." And I'm like, I think it's pretty funny. Like, so, I know <laughs> so now it. you go on podcasts. And, yeah, and no, just throw, just throw him under the bus. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that's to, anything to be embarrassed about. I mean, that happens in the team more than you would yeah. think about yeah. how on you like you are with your teammates about trying to perform, trying to win. Yeah, and. It's not like a bad thing to be that competitive. Obviously, you don't want to be punching your teammates in the face no. too often. No. But if it happens once in a, in a lifetime. Yeah, I've actually. I mean, how many people has he punched and broken their nose? Never. I don't think he's ever punched anyone ever again. <laughs> and I, and I, now he's told me anyway, but mm -hmm. he's never. I don't think he's ever done anything like that again. But yeah, it was funny that he did something like that to such a famous person. I can tell yeah. you to be just like, she. That's funny. <laughs> and then so you also played hurling and Gaelic football. Yeah, the f yeah, hurling and Gaelic football. Hurling up until I was about 14 or 15. Gaelic football until I was 18 um, because then I got literally banned from my own club because I played the foreign sport, which was soccer. Like, And I was with the Cork City 19. So I played. They were hounding me for weeks. It was a very big deal in my 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 town. Like my managers and selectors and club managers and like people like next, next door neighbors and stuff were like, coming to my house to convince me not to play the soccer game before we played the county final, let's call it, which is the cup, uh, the state final kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and they were coming to my house to have a conversation with my dad. My dad was completely against the guy. Like he did not like anything to do with the guy. Every time I had to go training, he was like, no, go yourself. I'm not bringing you down to that place kind of play situation. Like, cause he knew what they were like. They were very old school, like Irish, like traditional, like stuck in their ways. Um, and they, they always obviously called it the foreign sport, the mm -hmm. soccer. So it was a very big deal in my town. I was like talking to the town for a while that like, oh no, Stephen's not going to play a soccer game because he's got the county final that day. And then I just conspired with my manager, with the, the manager of the GA team. Um, he's like, look, I won't say anything. Like, just go play because it's like, no one comes to us, the youth games, academy games. Um, but like come straight after. Like, so I went from straight off the pitch into my dad's car. Funny enough, I, admit, I omitted this. It's like, I was driving my dad to my next game because like I said my dad didn't want me driving to any gay event at all so I get off the pitch dying like I just took a knock on my calf and one of his one of my buddy's dads who was at the game get us, gave us Pachin right it's called Pachin it's moonshine right Irish moonshine what's it called Pachin Pachin yeah and it's like I Irish, thought you were trying to say poutine no like it's poutine Canadian. it's like Irish moonshine okay. it's clear liquor and like it's so strong, like that, like you can put it on your legs and it works as like DP or it works as like Tiger Balm kind of thing. <laughs> so my dad was like, "You're driving, and before you drive, rub this into your legs." So I was like, "Okay." It came out of it came out of like a shopping bag, like it was so old and dingy, and it had like mold around the bottle. I'm like, "What is this?" And he's like, "Took it out and it just smelled like spirits." And he rubbed it on my legs, and my legs got really hot, like red hot. And I was like, "I'm stinking of booze right now." And you want me to drive across the city <laughs> to go to my game and then go in there and like whatever and he's like yeah so I went straight to the game then we ended up tying the, the final and I had to go to a replay but then word got out that I played that game before and they banged me for a year so I wasn't able to play the replay we won the replay but we, I wasn't able to play the replay I was like a water boy for them I had to jump the fence and I was not allowed on the sidelines so it was oh crazy my. yeah that's so funny yeah <laughs> the, that's times. what an Irish story yeah. you <laughs> your poutine yeah I forgot life. about that actually it was like yeah my buddy Jason Ford his dad um, on your way to Gaelic football uh, yeah and I was like he made me drive his car and I was like dad if I get pulled over right now they're gonna be like who's drinking in this yeah. car like, and I was like and you're terrible. what 16, 17 I was 17, 18, I think. Okay. I think, yes. 
seventeen, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. funny. Yeah, it was a, it was a weird time, and I was I just knew that was my last game, so I was, I was going to give it everything and play the whole game, and it was cramping by the end of it, and it was terrible. And we, mm-hmm. I missed a free kick to like win it, win it. All I had to do was kick it over the bar, like you know, yeah. from the floor. But it was just my calves were so bad that I cramped when I was kicking in. And I was like, and then they blamed me for the reason. I was like, <laughs> come on, boys, give me a break. You all, all these guys knew, all my whole teammate knew that I was like, you just played a 90 minute game. It was like, why didn't someone else take this free kick? Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> yeah, it tough. Yeah, uh, it happens. Yeah. To some people. I mean, I've never experienced no, that. But. No. Yeah. And, but then, so when you were doing this, you're playing hurling, you're doing Gaelic football, you're playing the foreign sport. Like, how often were you training just soccer, like, in a week? Um, With a team? or in, Did you do individual training oh, at all? definitely not. No, no. <laughs> you just, it was just all the gritty yeah, stuff Yeah, it was, on, like... No ball work? Um, yeah, we, well, we trained soccer, like, two or three times a week, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was probably twice a week, but we played Gaelic football, like, another two, three, two, twice a week. For one, sometimes I could go from one sport to the other that mm-hmm. night, kind mm-hmm. of thing, like... But like one thing about Gaelic football is that it, 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 I've never been so fit in my life. I know I was young at the time, but like once I finished Gaelic football and that was it, like I could never get back to that fitness. It's mm-hmm. just absolute warriors and I feel yeah. like it's like the hardest sport ever to keep fit. And once you get older, then you got to get bigger. Like it's very physical. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, if I stayed with it, I would have been like one of the fittest guys ever. But it was such uh, an interesting sport. Yeah, that, it's, I mean, it's high pace. Too. It's tough. It's like you get battered around the place. Yeah. You know? It's yeah. It's, I'm not it's gonna fun. pretend like I can understand anything that's going on. Yeah, yeah. It's because I've I've seen highlights of it, yeah. and I've seen there's a lot of people in the stands for yeah. the, the videos I've seen, and yeah. it's just I'm like kicking 15 up to their hands. Fifteen on fifteen. There's this huge pitch. It's like mm-hmm. way bigger than soccer pitch. Like it's positions. There's like six backs, six fours, two midfielders. It's it's yeah. It's mm-hmm. it's tough. Like especially if you play midfield, which I did, and all I like to do is run box to box the whole game, like mm-hmm. and just chase a guy, which is demoralizing sometimes when they're just so fast <laughs> yeah and then so by the time you got a little bit older and cork city started getting interested um which is the best club in in cork yeah yeah there's at, cove at, there's cove uh cove ramblers as well but they've always been like the lower team um, and mm-hmm. roy Keane played for cove ramblers actually but they've uh, cork city was uh, in the city of cork like and they were the biggest teams mm-hmm. back in the day and so at that point that's when you had talks with your family and you're like I need to focus on just one sport. I can't do be doing this and Gaelic yeah. football and and everything else. Yeah, like I said, you know, first take. It was, <laughs> it was uh, it's it's di- it's difficult when you're in that that spot because like being known as the soccer player then because you're with a high caliber team in Cork that like and you're still playing Gaelic then you're already kind of disregarded. It's like you can't he can't go any further because mm-hmm. that's not a good look for mm-hmm. situation and. Um, some sometimes I thought I could get more opportunities in Gab in Gaelic football, but um, it just didn't seem like anyone really wanted me there. Like mm-hmm. coaches and stuff like that, like they all knew that I was the soccer player, that mm-hmm. kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, a couple of my uh, buddies and like my best man was uh, gave a good crack off it as well. They're still playing to this day, like at this age, and um, but like back then they were like Cork Miners, which is like the state team and. Um, they were like way more interested in those players who were like true mm-hmm. Irish, like Gaelic uh, Gap players, like hurling and football, like in traditional players. Kinda. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I was always looked at as a soccer player. So at that point, I, I kind of knew I was on the way out anyway. So, and I obviously like soccer better. Yeah. But I didn't like soccer better. I actually preferred Gaelic football. It's just that, like, oh, really? there was more opportunity for me in soccer. Like, yeah, yeah. I think for anybody too. Like you yeah. said, at the top of Gaelic football, you're getting kind of treated well, you're getting yeah. some stuff paid for and everything, yeah. but it's not professional yet. No, it's not professional, yeah. exactly. So it's like everyone wants to be a professional soccer player. When, yeah. I, when I was younger, I was playing on the green and the grass with all my young friends. Like, so like everyone wanted to be a professional. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, like, I wanted to be like David Beckham or whoever was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dennis Norman or. Thierry Henry kind of thing like back in the day so it's like yeah we want to be those kind of people mm-hmm. what was your best memory at Cork best memory at Cork um, funny enough the only memory that well not the only memory one of the funniest memories funniest memories I came up with was I've only ever got one red card in my entire life and I was with really? Cork City nine, yeah under 19s with Cork City and I got two yellows within 20 seconds uh, for two f- tackles which i thought they were completely fair <laughs> it was up in dublin against shamrock rovers and like just went after it or just took a guy down whatever yellow card he <laughs> he then backs up the striker backs up to me the 
The guy took the free kick, played it to him. Man took a heavy touch, and I cleaned him out again. <laughs> and the ball went over the fence into the next field, like, and it was gone. It was like, whoa, what a tackle! I get up, and it was a second yellow. I was like, oh. and he started crying there, and then it goes, what? <laughs> what is going on? But that was one of the funniest things. But yeah, we won it. We won a double with the 19s, which was never done before. It was like a first first year, and like we were not supposed to because the Dublin teams are like. Dublin mm-hmm. players are really good. Like this, such a. What's the talent. What's the cup called in Ireland? Uh, the cup. The, yeah, like, like the the, first, tur- the tournament. Like you said, you oh, won the double. The double is like the league and the cup. Uh, I yeah. think it's Enda McKinney Cup. Uh, okay. It's like it's just a national cup, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just nationals, like so. Like we have a league, obviously, where we go around the country, but there's uh, a cup games and in, involved in that as well, as a cup tournament. But um, the Dublin teams are supposed to win it that year because they are very good. Like they have so much talent in Dublin so many people in Dublin mm-hmm. um, they have so many professional teams in Dublin uh, like Cork City was never going to was always going to be second best but we won we beat them, beat everyone out that year and mm-hmm. I think they won it again the next year after that so it was it was a pretty good team like so mm-hmm. yeah that's that's good yeah um, but then you said with the academy when you were with them basically you had a couple good years and you, were, you got some opportunities to be on the bench you get some really big teams yeah. you got to play some op- uh some preseason games and some uh cup games cup against games, some yeah. big teams yeah um do you want to list what those teams were uh well the preseason ones well they weren't preseason for us they were preseason for the english clubs um, oh you're not on the same schedule like the uh, same calendar i don't know what was going on really but it's like <laughs> it was in the summer at one point it's basically like international stuff that we do we'll have this year like we'll yeah. have like people come in whatever i don't know if it was their break or whatever i can't Remember, but it was we were playing against like United, uh, United Academy. I think the best player they had at that time was uh, Yenizai. Uh, he was just breaking through at that point. Mm-hmm. Uh, Blackburn um, was there with um, I can't remember the goalkeeper's name. Um, English goalkeeper, long time in, number one for England as well. Um, Patterson was there for Blackburn, and then we played um, Watford uh, just when they were getting promoted to. That crazy goal that they did mm-hmm. with uh, mm-hmm. what was the goalkeeper's name again? They were played for Arsenal as well. Um, blonde hair, tall guy. I think I don't know. He was playing that day, but Jean Franco Zola was the manager for them, so we got to meet him and all that stuff. Uh, what else did we play? United Blackford. Um, I can't remember now, mm-hmm. it's a long time ago, but yeah, played those games. And then, like, obviously, the only competitive games I played with the first team was with, like um, Munster Senior Cup, which is just cup games. That um, involve everyone. It's kind of like a smaller version of the Open Cup because mm-hmm. it's like amateur teams playing that as well and stuff. Um, so I only got that, and then I got a couple of call ups to like the actual bench in the first team. Mm-hmm. Um, I say like a handful of them. I uh, never got any minutes for that one in in the actual league, mm-hmm. but it was still a cool experience. Like, yeah. to be to be around a, such high end professionals that like had such great careers already. Like, and I mm-hmm. think that it's a weird. It's very intimidating. Very yeah. intimidating. Yeah, I mean that's it's. I mean, you're in a full stadium on the bench playing, yeah. like what you said, high, high level. Yeah. And at 17, 18 years old, yeah. watching that, like yeah. first real moments in professional footy, like that's that's pretty pretty cool. But yeah. it sucks you didn't get some minutes at, at some point. I, thank God I didn't because I would have made a fool of myself. You think so? I was terrified. think you were ready? I think it was, no. That's, what, that's one thing I've always, where it kind of comes to terms with it when I... Uh, started playing professionally here is that like I was not ready at that mm-hmm. age so that's when I see like guys come through with Detroit now like so yeah sometimes you are I kind of have like a go often but at the same time I was like think about me at that age it was like wow it's like yeah. how intimidating this is and how like how like tough it is to like get your mentally right for it it was mm-hmm. it was tough like and like think it back when I was doing it, it was like oh my god if they brought me on I would have shit my pants like <laughs> there was no way that like, because like it was one of the games was against Shamrock Rovers and they had like the other st- facing or stand it was a uh, it was packed and they had flares and stuff yeah. like that. It looked very intimidating and it was a tough game. I think we won it one, one nil or something like that. And and there was people going down left, right, and center. I was like, please don't bring me on. <laughs> one nil up here against Sam Grover's away, and I was like, don't bring me on, please. Mm-hmm. Like, and it was just t- but I was just there for I was just there for laughs, like mm-hmm. kind of thing. Like it was great. Like, but yeah, it was an intimidating time. So thank God I didn't go in. I was not ready. I wasn't yeah. ready until I was probably twenty, twenty one at that stage. Like, it took me mm-hmm. another couple of years to realize it was like it's not that. I mean, it is that serious, but it's like you kind of back yourself kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I mean, that is the greatest thing about college soccer in America is yeah. that for those players that aren't 100% ready at 18 yeah. years old to yeah. have four years of developing and also getting degrees so then you can see where you stand at 21, 22. Yeah, yeah. no, it definitely, you going through that period of maturity is like, it, it I, helps your game completely. It's like you, 
you almost like it's not as if you stop caring but you stop you leave go of all like the the worry of like the small things like oh if i make a mistake then i'm going to be done and mm -hmm. you know they go sub me off or whatever or if you give up a goal or something like that it's just, like, it doesn't work like that like people mm -hmm. all everyone makes mistakes mm -hmm. yeah i mean i was not ready 18 yeah <laughs> I, not ready at all i don't know I, how you bluff my way into that spot <laughs> into that situation i don't know how because one of the other guys that was with me He's, like I said earlier, he's still playing to this day, like in in Ireland. Like he was, he was ready. Like mm -hmm. uh, you could see it from day one. Like he played so much for them as well, Cork City over the years and stuff. He was so ready, and he was only my age. And I was like, ah, she's looking at him. This, he just, he's just an animal. Like mm -hmm. how do, you, how does he get this mentality right yeah. there? I was like, where did that come me from? Me and me and Elvis were talking about that this morning again. But we've talked about it before in the past. Like especially we see guys like that are so young coming up. Like yeah, they they just the mentality they have is just so mature yeah. it's like they're a 27 year old out yeah. there with yeah. their confidence with the way they approach the game with their speed of play mm. like one fidel barajas yeah. i always talk about this kid at charleston this yeah. guy like came out 16 first real experience i mean he's been with sacramento republic a little yeah. bit yeah. But like first contract really and the first day i'm like this guy is just toying with us like yeah. we should be toying with him and yeah. he's just dribbling doing it so confident yeah like i i never i still don't have that mentality no no <laughs> I see, well, i'm one 31 of, one of the reasons why i didn't have that mentality is that like you get like in, in ireland even at a young age like you get ripped to shreds from like your coaches which are just dads on the mm -hmm, team like mm -hmm. you like because we were such a high demand for my youth teams that like because we were so good yeah. we won every game we went to we went unbeaten in the league like good few years in a row like we went to national finals and stuff like that and like you get we get like roasted if we didn't yeah. do well and stuff like that i remember at like 12 or 13 years old like we played some tournament in Kerry, which is like a nothing tournament and at half time i got told it was the worst defender i've ever seen in my life at 12 i'm like it's like oh that kills me <laughs> so like that kind of compounds over the years it was yeah. like wait a minute like am i bad or that it's like ter <laughs> it's like they shouldn't be saying this stuff i I had like coaches that like, kick water bottles at you. It was like, dude, this is like 12 years old, man. It's like, at that time, it was like so serious already that like you didn't really get to enjoy it anymore. And mm -hmm. that's when confidence goes down. That's when you lose the spot. That's when, that's when you're like, ah, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. Yeah. Thing. Like, it's it's tough. It's funny. Yeah. Cause you, you like, it becomes so serious. You start taking it so seriously. And like you said, every little mistake you're yeah. analyzing. But at the end, oh, you're man. like, this is youth. Like, why, why did I put so much pressure on myself and both externally as well? Yeah. For youth. My dad used to do it to me as well. Cause yeah. obviously the pitches weren't great. <laughs> and like, I mean, as a right back, I was just like, any kind of winger that came down, I was just like, slight tackle, slight tackle, <laughs> slight tackle. It was like, I'm going to come off the pitch just covered in mud. Mm -hmm. And he'd be like, look at you. Like, what do, what's wrong with you right now? I was like, what's wrong? I had a good game. He's like, no, you're destroyed. Stay on your feet. Like all this stuff. And he's like analyzing it that, that much mm -hmm. in one stage. And I was like, I just want to play. Like, yeah. you know, kind of thing. And, and then my dad would be like at middle school level, even he'd take out the, the camcorder, the oh, old school no. tape, oh, no. record me the entire time. No. And then we would, right after the game, we'd get home, be si especially if I played bad, silent ride. Oh, all yeah. Home. The silent ride. Yeah. Pissed. Yeah. And then we put it, plug it straight in the TV. I'd sit right down and we would just start analyzing. No. Like, what what are you doing here? What are you doing? <laughs> And like on one hand, it helped me because I learned a lot. But yeah. like it was, it's tough. It's tough yeah. at fourteen to be have to do that. No, I, I even to this day I hate watching video because it's like I understand. I going to know the game. I know when I messed up, kind of situation. Mm -hmm. I know what I should have done, realistically. Um, so like watching it back is almost like a dagger, like in the yeah, head. Yeah, it's yeah. like ah. Oh. Yeah, it you does know, suck yeah. when you see bad mistakes. Yeah, but I love the thing is I love film. Like yeah. I don't know if my dad instilled that in me now, but like I watch every single game back that I play and watch every touch, full on do full breakdown of everything. <laughs> like I, I'm obsessed with love the film. Like what Yanni does, I love that. No, I could love do that. it, love I could it, love it. I want to do more. Like I love film. Um, but it's, for me, it's a lot of like the decision making, not so much of like the formations and how to go yeah. and other stuff. I really like just analyzing my decisions and, and positioning and figuring yeah, that out fair but, you know teach their own yeah fair, <laughs> teach their fair. own uh, my whole thing my dad was really instilling when we watched the video is just that i was just a wuss He's like, <laughs> you need to go tackle this guy you need to slide here why are you just letting this guy run by you? yeah you, i mean at that age as well like it's like being physical is not it's not really like you're not there yet like, and i was the know? smallest guy on the field yeah every you're not time there yet. like you don't know how to tackle properly yet. like like getting your body in mm -hmm. positions like it's just something you kind of 
figure out over time. Like. Yeah, and at 14, I was 95 pounds. Yeah. And I've, I've, you got 14 year olds that are six foot yeah. two, 200 pounds. Just depends on how you grow up. Like, at you. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not going to tackle this guy. No. Yeah. I'm going to fake a little calf cramp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Just got by me next to <laughs> Oh, shoot, Dad, I'll get him out. I'll get him I promise. <laughs> um, but yeah, so basically now, you've, you've been with Cork. You've had some amazing high moments. You've been on the bench with some cool stuff. What was the whole process of then? How did that come to the end? And then how did you, this new opportunity come up, which again, we've talked about yeah. it, take one, yeah. but run us through what happened there. Uh, it was pretty abrupt, uh, to be honest. It was, it was um, like, like I said earlier, I was just breaking through. Like there was, there was a lads holiday that you get every year when you finish, uh, when, every year, when you finish high school that mm-hmm. like everyone goes on, your parents pay for. So me being naive, I went in and told the, the gaffer that like, you know, my parents pay for this. This is mid season. I like, can I go? I don't play like you know stuff like that. Like it's like oh yeah yeah that's fine. Uh, just when you come back though, can you go out and loan to a local club like local men's club like uh, once the senior league is called? I was like yeah that's fine that's fine. Like I said, I would have done anything to go on this holiday. So I was like I would have washed his car if he asked me to do it like anything like. <laughs> so yeah, I was like yeah that's fine. And then when I went there to that club, then like kind of kind of lost contact it was I wasn't playing that much I, like again I wasn't physically ready for the, the men's game yet mm-hmm. especially in Ireland and he got the sack then I think mid-season of that men's league and you know I kind of got left hung out to dry there was no because the things he was telling me before when I was on the bench and these things like the pre-walk on the, on the field and stuff like that he'd be talking to me like you got to be the centre back of this club one day like just stick with it and stuff like that and that was giving me loads of confidence that like my career is going somewhere mm-hmm. and then when he got to sack then obviously everyone got cleared out um there was nothing there was nothing for me anymore like i said i didn't know where or if i had a contract at all to begin with kind of situation um so yeah i was kind of stuck in no man's land i had to go to college um my, my parents were forced me to go to college because i needed to do something next and then i found like this athletic course that does an associates but you also train but you get paid to do it like it's called FOSS and you you go training with all the with all the Cork City boys I was telling you the guys that didn't want to go to college either they were still trying to make it like I was <laughs> uh-huh. so it was like we had a sick team we were training every day we go to class for a couple of hours it's almost like an academy situation that like you go to school and you play you play mm-hmm. during the, and you get paid every week kind of thing uh, so I did that and then end up finding that thing on Facebook the little link to scholarships in America and I just randomly just threw my name down and gave him a brief insight of what my playing career, career was. And that was obviously good enough for them to call me the next day. Mm-hmm. And they're like, come to Dublin. We'll get your scholarship to America. You just got to come play this game tomorrow or whatever it was tomorrow or the week after. And my mom was like, I'll bring you up. And she brought me up. It was three hours away. Played a game. He was like, sign this form. We'll get you to America. No problems at all. So it's like, uh, okay. So basically overnight, I would say overnight, my life kind of changed. Mm-hmm. It was like, all right, that's now my next step. How do I get involved? I gotta do SATs, visas, you know, still playing, still trying to keep fit with like my uncle's team just to keep the men's game up, like um stuff like that. And you know, I was working on the side as well just to save up my own kind of cash. What were you kitty. working at? Just a, gr- a convenience store. That okay. was in, in the middle of the town. Like it was all it was almost like Christmas work, like they hire a lot of yeah. young kids during Christmas when it gets hectic and stuff. Um, so I was doing that and then just saving up money and then the following August day and I think that was it was probably less than 12 months and I was already gone to America mm-hmm. it was changing overnight kind of situation yeah it's yeah. so much of that in the the football world is like that where it's just like you think you're going down one path yeah you envision that's where the path I'm going to take whether that's to the pro level or even if you're already a pro you think you're going to continue down this way yeah and then all of a sudden so quickly out of nowhere it's gone stuff changes yeah and then all of a sudden you're packing up and going to Detroit or yeah. wherever it is <laughs> yeah it's like it's so it's so crazy and I feel like you just get used to it as a pro yeah about how that's, that's it was, your life that is was now. the first yeah that was the first taste of like actually like pursuing it properly if mm-hmm. everything else I kind of fell into and it was convenient it was like there it was like Cork City's there it's 15 minutes from my house mm-hmm. like so like it's just natural progressions I didn't have to do much thinking about it yeah uh, this one was like uh, well I don't want to go to college anymore uh, I'm at least I got to go to America and travel a bit like and, and at, at that point as well my mentality was I'm going to get something out of soccer here. Like yeah. I'm not like the famous Denzel Washington guys. I'm leaving here with something kind of situation. <laughs> like, so I was like a oh, free degree, get to travel. Uh, one of my buddies went the year before, like he loved it. Like he was in Nashville. He loved it and stuff like that. And I was like going off his word. It is oh, it's great and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, so like, yeah, I was like, I might as well do something with it. And you know, you never know what goes comfort after that. But I was, my 
professional career at that point was over. Like mm-hmm. I fully checked out. It was like, no, really? I going to college just to play soccer. Like, so you to, thought like, I'm going to get this degree and I'm either going to come back home or do something. But yeah. I, my just to play as like a means to the end to get school for free. And yeah. Yeah. School free. and an experience, a wow. travel like, and stuff like that. Cause you know, it's very doom and gloom in Ireland. Like when it comes to that, like, doing the same thing over and over and it's like i just don't see myself in this situation mm-hmm. it don't seem like i fit in this situation either so it was probably something i needed to do like mm-hmm. is either that or i probably would have stayed for another couple of years and immigrated to australia like a lot mm-hmm. of irish do or uh, new zealand situation like so at that point my career was done i was just playing and i was playing at a pretty high level with pretty cool guys and mm-hmm. traveling a lot so i thought it was like oh, that's good way to see it out like mm-hmm. kind of for sure it's funny how the different approaches of people take it with the college level it's like you get players that are like this is a means to the end i'm only here so i can yeah. one day get a pro contract yeah. and the other players they're just like yeah i'm going to do my four years yeah. have fun and again there. again if i had a different mentality a lot of things would be different like if i push myself to go to bigger colleges or if i push myself to even did more research in the situation of like professional structure in america mm-hmm. how it works didn't know anything about drafts, didn't know mm-hmm. anything about nationals, didn't know anything about D1, D2, NAIA, JUCO, none of that. So I didn't know anything. So I was, like I said, my mentality was the one that kind of almost hindered my pathway to where I am now mm-hmm. uh, as a professional in America. But um, like I said, like I don't really regret anything right now. It's, it just would have been taking me somewhere else. Yeah. I mean, I, and that's, yeah, I mean, there's so much to, and we're saying this is before, like really pre-social media with all the just abundance of information yeah. where now you could go and can, and go Google or watch a YouTube video about whatever. Yeah. And there's, I think I have a YouTube video on the college system yeah. now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Plug in my own channel. And None just, of that. Like, like yeah. I said earlier, like I didn't know where I was going. I knew I was going to Tennessee. It was in Pulaski. It was like, whatever. Like, but I was, I saw videos of them playing like in nationals. There was no stadiums. It was NAIA. Like mm-hmm. there was only one American. It was all internationals on my team. Like an all of them came from sick clubs like yeah. you know we're playing guys with like came from like um real sociedad academies wow. like like spanish academies and like all these players that like couldn't get d1 yeah things like like i was being told i couldn't get d1 because of the background but i was never paid in ireland so it was mm-hmm. like i was at a professional level i was at the team but it's just i was i didn't get to sign that final form to get paid mm-hmm. um so like i could have went d1 but i was being fed the wrong information mm-hmm. again like and it was very sneaky like that and which again would have, a lot of things would have turned out differently yeah um, but you know it is what it is like, yeah. these days it's i again like i said in the first one but like i think it's so funny how you have that like you get these Europeans, UK, where all these people will come over. Say, hey, Scarlett. <laughs> you get these people coming over for the first time with this vision of what they envision college soccer to be. Yeah. And then they get plopped off in no- nowhere, nowhere yeah. Tennessee or Oklahoma or whatever. Um, yeah. And just like, did you have that like, oh shit moment where what have I done? Yeah. When I first got there and the coach said, I'm not your coach anymore. He was the <laughs> one that was forcing me into being this, this team, which was like, it was fine. Like, cause I was going to a national championship winning team. Like they just won nationals. So I was like, mm. and they were returning all the players. Like I was just being added to this list, like kind of thing. And I was like, perfect. Like we'll go win another nationals. Like I didn't know how big that was until I got there. I saw the rings that they were mm-hmm. getting and stuff. And I saw the hype around the team with the college and shit, stuff like that. And, um, you know, then I started getting into, goes, oh, I want one of those. I want mm-hmm. a ring kind of thing. Uh, and then, you know, he left and I was kind of stuck and everything went kind of downhill from there. And when I got to my house that I was supposed to be okay with it, like I was saying earlier, my parents were making sure that I had everything set up for me, like with a house and stuff. And I go, oh yeah, everything's fine. Get there. It's just a bare bones house. Nothing in it. Not a couch, not a mattress, no nothing. So as I get to it, I say, what am I supposed to do? How am yeah. I supposed to source a mattress? How am I supposed to source a bed? Like all this stuff. And I was being kept in the dark a lot, like, which was frustrating. And I really thought I made a mistake. Yeah. And it's tough because like you want to, these people are coming across from Europe, um, being told and being hyped up and all this stuff. And then you get there and it's like demoralizing. It's like, well, well I made a mistake here because yeah. I was fed absolute bs mm-hmm. just to get me here because i knew once you're there it's like you have more chance of keeping you there than not because a lot of players i knew went home they're like i'm not sick mm-hmm. of this out kind of thing like why did you not go home um like, what kept you there just stubbornness i think <laughs> uh, out of me it was like oh, i can't i just invested like the last 12 months of my life and telling everyone i had a going away party <laughs> like you know <laughs> i didn't want to be one of those people who's like ah oh, he's back already like he's like what was the point in that going away party everyone <laughs> everyone came home and was like oh that'd be yeah. embarrassing like so it's kind of like i have to stick with it now like i made mm. my decision like i couldn't do that to my parents i couldn't do that to everyone that mm. like helped me financially or helped me like 
like other ways to to get to get over here that I was like oh sh- I don't want to look like a failure or yeah. anything eh? yeah so I just I just stuck it I was like it is what it is we we traveled to Florida for the first two weeks anyway to Destin we had a two-week camp there so I was like this is pretty nice mm-hmm. but then I went back to this crack house basically <laughs> so yeah. it was weird yeah so now you kind of had this moment where this is not exactly what you thought the college experience was going to be like no. you already had the going away party you're coming yeah. back now um and the stubbornness and not wanting to look like a failure kept you there yeah but how did that first year go with this university <laughs> and what, what was the name of the school again it was a uh, it was at the time it was martin methodist um, nai school but right now it's calling university of tennessee southern so they got taken over by ut um but it, like I said, it's in the middle of nowhere. There's like 2,000 people at the campus. And that's mainly the population of this town. Like it's mm-hmm. 30 minutes outside Huntsville, Alabama, but 40, 45 minutes away from uh, Nashville, Tennessee. It's right in, in the middle of nowhere. Um, I don't know if we say this, but it's where the KKK was founded, just so you know. <laughs> that also didn't, wasn't being, it's articulated to me before going in. So <laughs> that, it's so very, was shock. very country out there. Yeah. Um, so it was just a weird town, weird situation. Um, but yeah, they, like I said, they were national, so they were pretty good at the time, soccer yeah. wise. But yeah. And then, so for you then, how did your individually, like, how did your year go? Oh, like, how did the playing year awful. go? Awful. Um, well, awful in the sense that we did all the preseason and it was fine. I was starting, I was, um, I don't wait. I wasn't captain that first year because the there was a returning captain, a goalkeeper who was Irish, really fuck, really sick, mm-hmm. really goalkeeper. Um, but we came back into the campus playing a D one team uh, on a on our field, uh, last preseason game before season thing starts. They tip, they kick off, they knock it over my head as a centre back, and I just was running back just to tap it back to my goalkeeper, oh, and no. I got hit in the back by the winger, but my left leg was locked and planted. And just my knee buckled out the back of it, blew it up, ACL, PCL, MCL, complete reconstructions, 10 seconds into a game. And just my knee was like, there was a softball in my knee for two months. They couldn't get the swelling to go down to have surgery. So they couldn't even do imaging. They couldn't do anything of that because there's too much swelling. So for like the first two months, I was on crutches, had this thing, and then I had to get like fully reconstruction knee. But I, like again, at that point, another reason, another there was another point where I, sh- I should have went home. Yeah. I didn't have any friends yet. Like I had friends on the team who obviously do their own thing during the days and stuff like that. Didn't have any friends yet. Didn't know the lay of the land. It was a very hilly, like 45 degree hills to get anywhere to camp and stuff like that. So I, I didn't have, I didn't even have, I had a bed mattress on the floor. That was all I had with a busted up knee. Mm-hmm. No idea what was going on. And then I had to go get surgery. Um, and when I got surgery, I got dropped off by the, the, the trainer. Um, and again, uh, didn't have anyone pick me up. I was literally at the, at the because we had a. I think they had a game. I think they. I uh, think the team had a game. So uh, at the field, which was directly across the street from the hotel at uh, the hospital, mm. so there was no one there to pick me up. I wake up in surgery and just like sitting in the lobby, just no one. No I couldn't. Way. I didn't have any numbers to call. Didn't even have a phone number. No nothing. So I was like, oh my god, it's the most depressing thing in my entire <laughs> no. life. That's the point where like anyone would hundred percent understand that I could have went home at that point, but. I had, for some reason, I had my wife's number because it was like after preseason. So I met her because she played soccer down there as well, but she's from mm-hmm. Detroit. Um, I, I met her at like a, one of those pre, like pre-campus parties or whatever fireworks that the campus does kind of thing. I met her there, um, just chatted to her and I got like a Facebook or something. And then I text, I text her on Facebook and any chance she come pick me up because she's the only person I know right no now. No way. And she came and picked me up for, with her friend's car and then I, she carried me in home and then put me on the bed and I was like, I only knew her a week. Like, No <laughs> way. Yeah, yeah, and that's was, your now wife. That's my wife. That was 10 years ago. Yeah, and she, she was like, I don't want to do that. Like, She didn't She didn't want a boyfriend at the time. It was funny because she was saying this the whole time and she was like, I just love like, college and like whatever. And she was like, I asked her to do one thing and then from then on we were like inseparable kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Like, well, I kind of, what made it made it a thing to like talk to her more talk to her more go yeah. out and like dates and stuff like that like when she was like ah you know what? i don't want to go on a date today or whatever stuff like that. so it was kind of a long process to get her to be uh, my girlfriend at the time yeah um, but yeah she helped me out big like and i was like i think i remember because i was so jumped up on like drugs at yeah. the time to end up like 
going, she was carrying me up the steps and I ended up just crying. I was like, what am I doing? Like, it's just like, oh, this is terrible. First impressions are like, this girl and I like kind of thing. Like, but it was a terrible time for me and yeah. I should have went home and, you know, and then I went through my rehab with that and um, she helped a lot with the rehab and we got closer and she was the one that was basically my rock there because mm. I didn't really have anyone else besides the guys in the team, which again, were off doing their own things because they were seasoned. Like, so I did my rehab for that and I think the rehab was supposed to take nine months to 10 months, if not a year, depending on when. And within about four months, I took the brace off and I was running around, I was kicking. I was, and it, again, I, don't, I didn't know what an ACL was coming yeah. to America. And then they were like, oh no, you shouldn't be doing any of that. Because I don't know, it feels fine. It feels fine. Uh -huh. And then I finally got back to play like a spring game. Um, and I slight tackled to try block a shot. And I had one of those metal braces that go across your thigh and oh, your yeah. calf. And I got stuck in the grass and I couldn't slide. So I just stopped dead and I just took it off and threw it over the fence and I said, never again. And I just never wore a brace again. I just, really? Yeah, I just straight back into it. Like. Wow. But yeah, I played in the following year. Um, like I said, we were number one in the country. Assistant coach took over, French guy, douche. Um, <laughs> he um, took us from not, not ranked to, uh, ranked number one to not even ranked with the coaching polls and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Everyone hated him so much. Then he made me captain that my... Fresh my red shirts sophomore year like yeah, like yeah. my a red shirt my freshman played my sophomore he made me captain down there and then I was like I hate this place mm -hmm. I actually hate it and my wife was actually finishing up her degree to move back to Detroit um so I was like I was like I need out of this place like first of all it's not a place for me mm -hmm. I became like I scored like seven or eight goals in the back and they were like oh. all American honorable mention and stuff like that we didn't go to nationals we didn't even go to conference like we were so bad at that yeah. point uh, and then I was like getting offered I try to find a way out to get closer to her because she moved back to Detroit. And again, like I wasn't thinking about my professional career at that point. I yeah. was like, you know what? I just need to get out of this place. And wow. she went back and then I somehow finagled a place up in Davenport in Grand Rapids, Michigan, mm -hmm. who just won nationals as well. And so oh. I missed out in two rings. <laughs> <laughs> one year late on both. Yeah, one year late on both, yeah. I think it's the best part. I mean, this is why I love, I think the US sells at this perfect level of, for the podcast yeah. because there's so much grit and grind for so yeah. many times where I talk to people I'm like, yeah. why did you not quit there? Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it, there's so many people, every person's story, every single person of almost a hundred people I've had on this podcast, there's a, multiple, if not a lot of moments where I'm like, what made you not quit? And yeah. Like, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Exactly. Yeah. And it's, it's like that. Like I can't imagine flying across the country, getting in there to a place that you had all these expectations about. It's not fulfilling it. You get injured. Yeah. You're not getting picked up from the the no the nobody, surgery. Nobody. You're going home to a mattress on the floor in a crack house. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. like to me, like ninety nine percent of people would be like, "Mom, buy me a ticket. I'm going." Come yeah. Home. And funny enough, like if I didn't meet my wife there, like literally like a week after playing, like it wouldn't it would have been a different story. Like I would have been mm -hmm. either gone home or left to a different. Uh, different uh, team or a different college at that point but like i met my wife i was pretty happy like at that point like a girlfriend at that point um funny enough like when 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 i did get injured my mom was like sending me money to like f like get like cabinets or whatever mm -hmm. into your bedroom to make it seem a bit more like at home like she was trying to make me stick it out as much as possible like yeah. anything and i came home from rehab and it's not still not walking like i was just on crutches and stuff like that and Antula, her name is Antula, my wife, and she was in the bedroom on the floor trying to put together all these IKEA closets and stuff like that. She had no idea what she was doing, so I ended up having to do it all myself with a broken knee, like hurting, like so bad, like just to put it all together. It's like I can't walk around this mess now because you created this mess. <laughs> yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> that's crazy. I yeah. didn't know that's how you met your wife. That's yeah, she played on her team were top five in the country. They're still top five in the country right now. Uh, mm -hmm. Even that was a long time ago. Like, but she played in World Cup players. She was pretty good. Like so. Wow. Yeah, she um, bounced around Michigan for a minute and then found her last couple of years in college was in Tennessee, yeah. Dang. Yeah. It's That's hectic. funny. And again, I love like the, the butterfly effect of everything and the little things that kept you there or whatever. It's yeah. like Facebook ad that popped up to yeah. bring it to America. Yeah. Meeting yeah. this girl at yeah. that one pre-campus party or yeah. whatever kept you there at school, yeah. which then allowed you to go to this new school which got you to Michigan, which yeah. then kickstarted the next phase. Yeah. It's just so funny to me, like all these yeah, little things. To, to, be even, to be even honest, to get to Davenport and Grand Rapids when I did move, it was like, I went home for Christmas and there was an assistant coach at Grand Rapids that um, that was from where I'm from, Ballon College. Like, knew nothing about him. He was older than me like and stuff like that, so I never would have crossed paths with him back in the day. He was a couple years older. Um, he just 
I don't know he got wind when he was at home in Ireland that like he must have known that of players in Ballincollig that was gone to America he must have known of me or something like that mm-hmm. and then I got a Facebook when I came back in January to Pulaski um, I got a message from my sister my younger sister who's, who got a message from his younger sister because you're not allowed to talk directly apparently he oh, said like, yeah. I heard you're not happy there and then it's like who is this person <laughs> who is this person so I googled his name and he goes he's the JV head coach with assistant coach of the thing he goes he wants to play JV what do we? Like, yeah. I'm not coming I'm not leaving to go play JV kind of thing but he was actually just getting me to go up to like obviously the varsity team up in Grand Rapids and I was like mm-hmm. alright get me out and then uh, then I had another tough time to get out like it was the yeah. transfer process you mean no the transfer was fine but they wouldn't release they wouldn't give me release for six months I had to fight my coach in AD oh man and their main object their main thing was we paid $60,000 to fix your knee I was like but you've done this to my knee like yeah, I didn't have like, I think I enjoyed any of this like, yeah. so I had to fight him for about six months Um, to, I had to go to the AD the AD wouldn't do it I was going to write a letter to the president They're just like I don't want to be here like yeah. you guys sold me a dream it wasn't here like all this stuff and like I got injured like this is terrible and then they were like oh you're just trying to follow a girl like and all this stuff they were getting very nasty with me so then I end up just refusing to go to training Yeah. and I was like I'm not going to train and he kept calling me kept calling me and then by the end of it I was like I answered the phone to him and he was like like I said he was a big douche ever and he was like look I'm signing it like I don't care anymore I'm signing it why is this so personal with you like like, I need to go like this is not anything for me like and he was like you're just trying to follow a girl and I was like Oh, he also said. Funny enough, he also said you you're never going to become pro and all this stuff. He was being very yeah. spiteful and all this stuff, laughing. And I was like, dude, it's none of your business. This is my life. Why, yeah. why would you say any of this stuff? Turns out I went pro and I married this girl. So I was like, what? You're an idiot. You're an idiot. You knew nothing. Anything. <laughs> Hilarious. I so. turned pro and I married that girl. <laughs> so like, so suck on that. I don't. Know, I don't know why they were. But the AD was the same. He's like, yeah. we paid too much for your knee. You got to play another year. And I was like, no, I'm not playing That's another how it works. year. It's yeah. like, why, why, why would you say that? Funny enough, the the college actually had to um, do like eight or nine in that one. Um, fall season uh, ACL surgeries from basketball to soccer to everything there were like so many people's horror ACLs it was like a common thing then mm-hmm. and it was like something in the water or something like yeah it was that's terrible tough. yeah that's that's crazy to me that like these are grown men with grown jobs yeah. bullying kids yeah yeah of, to like do that it's like I'll there's no legal thing him. the fact that you get a surgery there means you have to stay you're obligated for another year two yeah. years whatever I know it was it's just crazy it was wild it was like you guys you guys messed up like first of all mm-hmm. you, you got me here on false pretenses that I was going to be with this coach and this guy signed me I wasn't going to go anywhere else wasn't going to look if I did you, you'd be in trouble stuff like that and then getting there and all this stuff mm-hmm. going down and finally got out of it after six months of just threatening to write letters to the president and all this stuff it's like they can't keep me here like yeah, why would yeah, they do yeah. that like it was terrible a terrible time but then you got to Grand Rapids yeah and how was that a better experience yeah Grand Rapids is like a really nice city mm-hmm. um, it's right off well it's really close to Lake Michigan as well but like it's the downtown is nice it's actually a downtown it's mm-hmm. not like the Pulaski place um, like it's a big R college um, really nice new college um, but like yeah it was a way better situation like again we were I was on a sick team it was like mm. my first year but again even in that situation where I thought I was finally getting out of all the the crap of politics that like I was again told the wrong information that like when I transferred they were going to D2 in a year or two mm-hmm. and I was going he was like oh you can transfer your first year here is going to be NAIA we're going to win the Nationals again we lost the semi-finals on PK it's fair enough and I was yeah. like okay there's going to be one year of probation for the to transfer to D two, mm-hmm. and then you grandfathered in. So your senior year, you're allowed to go. Na- we're allowed to go national stuff for that. Fault. It was two years. So my last two years wasn't a good nationals. So like my last two years in college, I was like kind of like on a crap team that like sucked because oh, they yeah. couldn't attract any players because we weren't allowed to go nationals. And I was like, why? Why do people lie like that? Yeah, just yeah. just tell me the truth when you're coming in. Like it was yeah, terrible. That's, that's it is funny. I'm always curious. It's like are are how much of a lie do you know this is that you're telling me yeah is it is it 100 do you believe it yeah do you not believe it it's it's, it's funny it's wild and i want and I, that's like i always say too like when i do become a college coach or whatever it is whatever i want to do yeah. it's like i i hope that i don't get suckered into that yeah as that my my way of recruiting or whatever it is yeah at least at least be upfront with them make let them make the decision like mm-hmm. it's like you again like you're playing with people's lives and a pathway in life like mm-hmm. it's like why would you do that just for your own game for one year and then all it's going to do is can create an atmosphere of people on your team that are not happy yeah, yeah. which you, it definitely did like I, I was pretty pissed when i found out there was oh it's actually two years not one year so like yeah. So realistically, I only got two years in my whole four years or five years, but in college, that I was able to go nationals because right. of 
lies and in injury like i think it's tough and yeah. then so with those two three years two years at grand rapids yeah so i actually like i played my red shirt year so i played like a 50 year like okay so, so with those three years it, it, i mean you were you having good seasons and then you were like i'm did it change your mindset because i know at this time you were like i just want to get the degree no but now I didn't were you that. thinking like i'm gonna go pro or no like? it, it definitely didn't change my mindset uh, i was like especially because the first year i went to grand rapids really good last night semi-final nationals we should have won the whole thing it was mm -hmm. crazy um then obviously all the seniors left and the thing was like i was always older than everyone like i was always one of the oldest on the team because i only caught to america when i was turning 21 like you know kind of thing yeah. so i was always like again another mentality of like like i'm not young anymore like who's gonna pick me up anyway as a professional kind of thing like yeah um so like last two years were terrible we couldn't recruit because we didn't have nationals we didn't have anything appeasing to everyone mm -hmm. <clears throat> And then my senior year, I, I hurt my knee, so I didn't really play my senior year. And they were like, oh, red shirt, we could play, you could do your masters and stuff. And I goes, I'm not doing that. I'm done with college. Like, yeah. I'm done with all this BS that I've been doing <laughs> the last five years. Like, I'm done, like, whatever. But I was playing in 2016, 17, I can't remember now, but um, I was supposed to play with Grand Rapids, who were MPSL. Mm -hmm. Detroit were MPSL. Yeah. Uh, in the summer, summer ball. Like, um, Grand Rapids, you get like five, 6,000 people fans yeah. downtown. Yeah. It was really good. It was really fun. Um, and it's really hard to get into because they recruit well and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was told I was going to play with them in the summer, went home for Christmas, came back and they were like, oh, we um, we actually don't need you anymore. We signed out at center backs. So I was like, oh, well, F you then. Like, oh, <laughs> why, why would you, do, why was that? Why was that everything? Like, he was like, oh, you never signed officially. So like, whatever. And I was like, oh, okay. Then I was stuck without a team. And then finally someone said Detroit have a team too and they're pretty crazy over there and I was like oh well my wife lives in Detroit mm -hmm. um I was gonna go probably there anyway in the summers anyway so I might as well go over there and live in my parents basement for <laughs> for the first summer yeah um and but I had to like give like tape to Ben Pearman was the coach at the time mm -hmm. for Detroit and he was like yeah you come play you come play um and I was like okay fine so I played with Detroit and ever since ever since I played my first game in Detroit Grand Rapids were like, oh, you got to sign for us this year. I was like, no, why would I ever do that? <laughs> yeah, like, you guys yeah. screwed me over already, like for no reason. Like, it's like, why, why are you being such a dick yeah. to me? Like, and like, like stuff like that. So every year they're trying to get me to sign every summer, and I was staying with Detroit every summer. Uh, Flint Bucks, uh, Michigan Bucks at yeah. the time, they were like, they were like trying to get me to come there, and I was like, no, nah, I'm gonna play with Detroit. Um, and then it was, um, what's his name? He was the San Diego head coach last year. Um, oh, Nate Miller. Nate Miller. Yeah. Nate Miller was a uh, head coach of like the NPSL team in Lansing. He was like, mm -hmm. "Come play with Lansing. I'm going to Lansing Ignite at the mm -hmm. time, um, and I'll take you with me in League One." I was like, "No, nah, I'm just going to play with Detroit again." Like I wasn't trying to play pro, and I heard terrible things about the league and how much money they make at that time. Yeah. It was like especially League One, not even Championship kind of thing. I was like, they, I was lo loads of players in Grand Rapids went." To Pittsburgh, even like in that, and they yeah. ended up retiring immediately after that. They were like, "It's not worth it." Yeah, yeah. And they were getting bullied by Bob Lilly at the time, but, but it doesn't matter. Like, <laughs> um, but he then Nate Miller was like, "Come," and I said, "No," to him <clears throat> to go to United and then to Lansing Ignite. Uh, so I was like, "I'm going back to Detroit." And by the time then, I was just graduating college. Um, and then there was word that we were, Detroit were going pro, and it was like MPSL Members Cup next. It was like a MPSL mm. Pro edition kind of thing had the cosmos in it and stuff and that's when trevor took over and i was like oh well like i'm done playing soccer now because like he's big time saw his resume he's yeah. got like two champions league medals as, whatever as a scout <laughs> and he calls me and he was like will you come play um in 2019 to uh, this new pro league and i was like sure i'll give it a go <laughs> on peanuts like it was like my first straight out of college like yeah. it was just on peanuts like there's no reason for me to do it and it's like i'm only doing it to help out the club like it's been a couple of years already um just to see them a little bit of established kind of thing mm -hmm. and then like trevor just took it to the next level like he changed the whole holes like field house to everything like the how you were getting taken care of mm -hmm. travels and stuff and i was oh this is pretty cool but I still wasn't getting paid anything like so it was terrible well it's getting paid but it was peanuts like i said uh, and then just kept moving up from there. And I kept threatening basically the, the ownership. Alex Wright, Sean Mann, like we used to go out, out nights out after games. And I'm like, if you don't take another step, like I'm done, like I'm retiring. Like if you don't go to USL League One or the championship or something, I was basically threatening them every year. And like everyone was like, they were like, oh, we know, Steve, we know we got to do something about this because it was so unstable at lower yeah, league. It was like, yeah. why would I keep playing at 25 to like do all that stuff? Mm -hmm. Um and he was like, and then they finally just made the jump, and I was like, oh, 
no, now it's legit. Like, mm-hmm. but it was too late in my life to be kind of put, hanging my hat on it, like anything. I said, I'll play a year or two, and then it's the third year of it. But we'll see how it goes forward, like kind of thing. <laughs> I think it's so funny is that like out of everybody I've had on the podcast, ninety nine percent of the people, I think you might be the only one at this point. Like, it seemed like you just kind of kept on getting. Pushed, pushed almost against your will to the it pro was. level it higher literally higher. was it literally was most like that. players are like doing everything clawing trying to get up there and no. you just get pushed and pushed and you're like ah, ah push it, yeah, push push it, it was like a blessing and a curse because like like i said we went from this mpsl league we won the mpsl league uh we lost in like nationals were at the time um and then trevor came in obviously trevor was the first year in mpsl he was like we're going to this thing in the fall so it was like almost like a half year thing instead of just summer mm-hmm. I'm like okay well i'll just you know, I could stay with you if you need. And he was like, yeah, I would stay. Uh, and then we did the MPSL thing. We beat Cosmos, who apparently at the time had players in the league that were you know, in the team were making like half a million a year. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. they were in like national teams and stuff. And I goes, yeah. so we won that. And I was like, oh, that was sick. And then they were like, oh, the club wanted to go to it an, an, another level. And that's when Nisa popped up. Mm-hmm. And they was like, oh, like there's still a chance for the club to be independent, like league and stuff like that. So then they were like, uh, we can go to Nisa and it's like legit like sanctioned like third division whatever and it was like a, uh, offering a contract and I was like oh, I don't know dude uh, and my wife was like doing well at her job she was finishing her masters she was getting like promotions after promotions so she was doing well she was like what else are you going to do and I was like oh, I actually don't know so it's like alright well I'll play another year or two and then I got like a two year contract for the Nisa two years and then COVID hit and all that stuff mm. Uh, and then it was just like these bubble tournaments that we had to do and it was terrible and I'm like we won we won like 50 games in a row and it's like what am I still doing here like why <laughs> like this is not even competitive anymore uh, and just the league itself was so unstable like Nissan it was like why are we traveling to LA like why are we traveling to San Diego to play on like this high school field with no yeah. fans and I'm like like there's no need for this like at all like <laughs> I, if I was 18, 19 different you yeah, know yeah, yeah. but I was 25, 26, 27 like and just then those years kind of meshed together and then mm-hmm. they were like Okay, now I'm done. Mm-hmm. I, we bought one all of Nisa. I did very well in Nisa. I got like two MVP trophies and yeah. stuff like that. I'm fine with that. And then I was like, okay, I think that's it. Like, because if they keep playing Nisa, I'm done. Like, and pretty mm-hmm. sure everyone on the team was going to do the same thing. They were like, Nisa's not worth doing this stuff. Uh, and then, then just the news came one day. It's like, yeah, we're dumping Nisa. We're going to USL. And I goes, oh, sweet. And I was expecting the USL League One to kind of gradually go to championship. No. not which one deep end. I'm like, <sighs> and I said to my wife, and I was like, just one more year. Just one more year. And I say that every year to her. It doesn't matter. But this, that year was specific that like we're going to championship because yeah. let me see if I can do this. Like let me see if I'm actually up to scratch for this stuff. Mm-hmm. And that one year we did well and we, I, I loved it and it was actually like legit and it was it was cool. It was like playing it like, you know, Louisville, like mm-hmm. those stadiums and traveling well and like looking the professional part and actually getting decent money at the time. So it was like, it was finally, unfortunately towards my higher ends of 20s into 30 now and 30, 31 this year is that like wow if this happened in my early 20s I'd be like I'd be shooting for the stairs I'd be pushing to go other clubs I'd be pushing to go yeah. MLS you know but for years I was just like stuck in this bubble of Detroit that like I wasn't planning ahead I was always like oh, will you do one more okay I'll do one more yeah. kind of thing Like so I was like I could have pushed further if I wanted to earlier to go to USL championship teams or even like try to get into like a draft after yeah. college but I just never had that mentality my, my mentality was always like um, finish soccer get your degree move on with life mm-hmm. and then you just kept falling and falling and falling into things that like no I'm 30 years old <laughs> <laughs> the last 10 years I was like what just happened <laughs> just one more year one more year yeah. and you go now you're 30 years old and maybe after, you know, maybe more, um, one more year two more years three yeah, more years well, keep yeah, pushing I'm out of contract at the end of this year so that needs to be up, up for the debate but like, yeah. like I said to I'm like I said to my wife, like every year it's like throughout the year, it's like, oh, it's, this is so tough mentally, physically, like being away from her, being away from like all the fun and like stuff in life, like friends, weddings, mm-hmm. and, you know, mm-hmm. stuff like that at home that you have to miss because you're in season. And it's like, oh, when do I, when do I call it quits? And then you're like, hey, maybe this is your last year. And then it gets to the end of the season. Like we go to playoffs and she's like, you can, you can do one more. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. You can do one more. <laughs> it's the hardest part. Cause it's like, and and people like, I think a lot of kids especially, but like a lot of people think like, oh, being a pro, it's just sunshine, rainbows, it's fun no, times it's all tough. the time. Even if you, everything's going right, yeah. mentally it's still tough. Yeah. Like every single day is a grind. You're pushing your yeah. body, the competing, you have a bad day, it hangs with you. The travel, the physical toll yeah. on your body, like you said, being yeah. away from weddings yeah. and, and family events. I've missed every family vacation for the last yeah. like 
10 years. Yeah. But it's just that part that just keeps on sucking you in. That's yeah. just like the wins. Yeah. And then they're getting further into the playoffs yeah. and scoring goals and like that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. And you're like, I can't replicate that yeah. anywhere else in life. No, it really is because even like now I've had like two surgeries on my knees, just got a surgery on my shoulder in November. Like just like my drive home after trainings, mm-hmm. I get out of my car and I'm like, an old man, I cannot move my knees, cannot move my back, like just walking up the stairs and every day getting out of bed, like my wife was like, what's wrong? Like, what's wrong now? Like, it's like, I just can't straighten up yet. I have to, li- I have to like loosen up first, like going down the stairs or whatever. And it's like, why do I keep doing this to myself? And then I'll go training. I'm flying around the place, flying around yeah, the place. Yeah, yeah. And then once training done, everything cools down, the body cools down and goes, and you just all, and I'm yeah. like, oh, like I want to be able to like play with my kid when I'm like, mm-hmm. you know, in my thirties, I kind of think like, it's like, that's not an unreasonable thing to cross. <laughs> but right now it's looking pretty difficult. Like it's, she was like, you're not even going to play, play soccer with your son because you're going to be too crock to do it. And I'm like, yeah. I know. So he's like, oh, I'm putting my body through all this. Should I actually keep doing it? But then it's like, you go out there and you do it. And you ha- if you have fun doing it, then it was like, it's great. But then, yeah. like you said, when last year we went through a couple of tough periods, tough patches, and it's like, well, I've never had this in my career yet mm-hmm. with Detroit that, it's like, oh, Jesus, I would love to get, like, we got battered by two, uh, Tampa away last year and then Phoenix away, we got battered like 4-0 or 5-1. Mm-hmm. And it was the only times in my entire life that I got like really battered, like and to the point it was like on the way home from the airport. I'm like, that sucks so much that I would retire right now if I had the opportunity to. Like, I'm, it was so depressing at that time. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like, am I actually good or am I not good? Like, you kind of question yourself mm-hmm. kind of thing. Like, mm-hmm. it was tough, like mentally to get over that stuff. Like, yeah. I know it's and, and for me too it's like I've had good years in the USL and I've had really really tough years whether that tough years were like with I've had five injuries and surgeries yes. all through it in one year and then another year it's like oh we just have a losing season and yeah. I'm like thinking to myself I know I've done it before I can make playoffs I can yeah. win I can score goals and get assists I can start 30 games out of the season like why I'm not a different player and then yeah. it's like I want to do one more and then it's yeah. like we could bounce around and bounce around and go and I keep on telling maybe like one more year I want to yeah. keep going let me do this and then and then you get to that low point and you're like I think I might be done yeah and then all of a sudden somebody calls in Detroit will be like hey Detroit's trading for you and all of a sudden I'm like I'm playing five more years yeah. I'm <laughs> yeah. so exci- I'm yeah. so pumped That's I want to be here that was what it was this year was because there was so much change going on it was like like oh, I'll give you like let me see what this other change is because I was with Trevor for so long and, and loved every minute of it and being part of like that bigger thing that like he trusted in my opinion and, and me and Matt Lewis at the time we used to have meetings with him all the time we talked about the team and you know selections and like how guys are doing like so I was very inv- heavily involved in that mm-hmm. stuff so like when this came when Danny take, was taking over this year it was like I kind of have to play this one way. Well, I was on a contract anyway, but whatever. <laughs> uh, that like, I kind of have to see like what another life would be like. Because mm-hmm. over the years, I've always kind of worried, wondered, like my wife did too, is like about like, what if I did leave and go to like uh, Tampa or mm-hmm. somewhere like that, like a different club in the league. That, like, is that the, is this the same experience as I'm getting in mm-hmm. Detroit? Mm-hmm. Um, this is like one of the things I always wondered, but I was like, but like I loved it. I loved my position at Detroit so much that like, I didn't want to like go somewhere and hate it and then regret it, regret mm-hmm. it kind of thing. But now that there's new staff, there's new team involved this year. It's like, I have to see this one out at least just to make sure that like, <clears throat> I didn't just like piggyback off previous years. That, like yeah. I, I earned a spot like mm-hmm. back or whatever. Cause you know, Danny came in saying there's no one safe. There's no mm-hmm. one position safe. Like everyone, everyone's staring his clean state. It's like, wow, that's six years of my life just out the window. Let's see if I can actually do it again, kind of mm-hmm, thing. And it's mm-hmm. like, so coming off a sh- shoulder surgery, I was like nervous. I really got into fitness. Then my fitness back in January, like eating right, doing healthy, going to the gym, mm-hmm. all that stuff. Because I was anxious in my head because I gotta make sure I try to do this right for yeah. this new guy. Because this this could be the thing that I was missing out in the last couple of years, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Like. Mm-hmm. So it was yeah. I, I mean, I've had like the opposite where I've bounced around so much in my career for like factors both in and out of my control. And like there is, there's nothing different about, or there's nothing the same where it's like that feeling that you get of like the anxiety butterflies going into a new club, new city, new coach, new teammates. It's like, it's just brand new. And you're just like, I need to perform. Like I need to come in your flying. And it's like, I don't want to say like if you're complacent from coming back to a new year, but like it's different. The butterflies and the anxiety you get with a new coach or new whatever. Yeah. And it does push you. It pushes you for sure. It really does. Like for a long time in during preseason, I was like, I was like, I've been a captain in Detroit since, since what, 2018, like for for a very long time, like anyway. And 
I was just like, even in preseason, it was like, this is the first time in my professional life anyway. Well, the first time in America for sure that I was like, wow, like, I really got to earn this spot mm-hmm. back. Like, mm-hmm. it was like this, so many good centre backs right, that we had like last year, like last couple of years. And we've always been defensively so strong. Mm-hmm. Like me, Matt, Dev, Mike, like all play centre back. Like, mm-hmm. I was like, now he's only two spots of centre backs. And these guys are just as good as me as well. Like, so I was like, now I got to kind of try earn it back again kind yeah. of thing. Now, so I was like, the anxiety of just like you every miss pass every mistake you did in preseason it's like doubled down and like oh that's mm-hmm. yeah I, just, mm-hmm. I don't know if he likes me now <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's like very like self-conscious about it that like he shouldn't I, I shouldn't feel that way at 30 years old it should be backing myself kind of thing but it was like a new brand new situation for me so i was like oh it was just a tough time mm-hmm. it was like a tough thing to get through and it was like hopefully it stays this way but like it started the first game so i was like hopefully that stays because He's literally he can do anything because I still we still don't really know him that well like yeah. either, so yeah. don't know what he's thinking don't know how because he kept everything close to his chest this yeah. year so it was um it was cool though it was a cool cool different vibe mm-hmm. the uh, the great. thing that is always like interesting to me that I've, I've told Mimi about this or I told my family about this it's like I feel like the moment that I stop getting that anxiety especially when I go to different teams there all every year but like the moment I stop getting the anxiety of the butterflies the excitement of like wanting to push myself to my physical limits and get ready and, and same thing critiquing myself and like almost getting upset at myself for a simple pass or yeah. something but like it's to me it all just shows that I really really care about yeah, it yeah and I so know. it's like once I stop having that and I'm like oh whatever screw it like, yeah I'm just gonna come in on fit like that's the moment I gotta retire yeah what's funny though is when i would say that at 23 24 i thought it was going to happen at 26 27 and i care the same if not more (laughs) now at 30 probably more now even because i just it's like i feel like i have something to prove being older i don't know and like i've already done it i don't want to let it slip now yeah so it's like i have the like i the same exact feeling like wow this is not going to end anytime soon yeah which mimi doesn't like to hear yeah i know (laughs) she wants me to she wants me to have the best career ever but at the same time it's like we're not getting paid millions, millions of dollars. Exactly, which is the, obviously the one of the biggest concerns is that like, like at what point is, do you squeeze the most out of this game and this mm-hmm. league as possible? That like, is it going to progress your life after or not? Because mm-hmm. like right now it's like, did I get like, are we at the point where like, you know, this is the best we're going to get and like this is it? And we're we the we're at the mountaintop like and. You know, are, are we pushing our professional careers post soccer back because of this? It's like all these things you kind of you kind of think about when you mm-hmm. get like one of the older guys on the team that like, you know, you don't know how how you feel about it, but like you still like like you said, the drive is still there, which is like a good thing. And yeah. it's like you want to win, you get very competitive, and it's like you see me in games, it's like I completely switch onto like an an ass, like, to, yeah. and then it's like if I didn't if I didn't switch like that, like you were saying, then like. Why would I even bother? Like, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah. it's just all still there. So like all these off the field stuff, you're like, oh, you know, I got to start my professional career. Like, you know, I'm getting up there or whatever. Then it's like, no, nah, I'm still balling with these 18 year olds. I can yeah. still catch them. I did the two mile with them and beat them all. Like, anything <laughs> like, so it's like, why am I, why would mm-hmm. I ever stop then? Like, you know, mm-hmm. but then like, yeah, he's just, it's just a roller coaster every each it's week. It's a roller like, coaster. Each week he's just like, oh, this is terrible. This is unreal. This yeah. is terrible. And you like, have a good, your team is flying in the possession drill, in the yeah. training. And Even something small as possession drills, it's like, oh, this, oh, you yeah. get so frustrated so easily. I'm like, but like, if you, like, if you actually didn't care about that, you wouldn't get frustrated. Like, yeah. so therefore, like, you actually want to play it. Like, you want to mm-hmm. be here. Like, exactly. It shows that you care and it shows that you want it. Yeah. Uh, one question I have for you is like, this, I don't want to say that you, didn't care it through college but it's like almost like you weren't really actively planning for a professional route no do you wish you could go back in time and and tell yourself be like push like try to do it or do you think there was there was a point um early on in with detroit that you see all these guys like uh, coming out of college and when i was already with detroit that that they were like pushing for drafts and pushing for like um professional teams and like getting agents and stuff like that was like there was a point in my mid-20s that like if I'm going to do it, I got to do it now kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But again, I wasn't, I wasn't in the position like, um, to, I wasn't well known. Mm-hmm. I didn't have any connections. I didn't have anything like that. Like I didn't go to a big college. So there was a lot of things against me that like, that are like big factors into making it to the next level, having a good reputation, being at a great college or mm-hmm. a big, co- bigger college that like, those stuff bump you up in like your, your stature and you're like, 
your your resume when you do go try and push for agents or push for like teams or trials and stuff like that. But yeah, there was there was one point where it's like I can I can do better. Like I can push it. I can cut on. And it's like Trevor would be talking to me about this stuff as well. He he's like I could get you in preseason with a couple of MLS teams. Like uh, I know there's a couple of teams in like USL that want to see you and stuff like that. And and I was like, all right, well, you know, if they want to if they want to call me, call me. Like you know, here, you have my number. Give it to them. Like kind of thing. Like but didn't get any call. I don't know if that was from. Trevor or not, but mm-hmm. like he's, I didn't get any call, but he was saying there was loads of interest in, in the championship and there was loads, there was a couple of interest in like going to MLS camps and stuff mm-hmm. like that at one point. Um, and again, that's, I'm going to have to put that down on me and not pushing that. Like, you mm-hmm. know, I, was, mm-hmm. I can't blame anyone else. Like I said, my mindset from the start was like my fresh gear was done and I couldn't see any other pathway to become professional. So getting that information, I should have, I should have pushed on a little bit. Mm-hmm. I did get an agent for a year, but he, was he had like a mental breakdown and end up <laughs> dropping all his players oh, no. and calling it a day so i was like okay well i'm done with agents anyway like because as trevor was pretty much my agent like because yeah, he was yeah, yeah. he was he was a very true honest guy like so he took took care of me in every step away mm-hmm. like kind of thing so i that loyalty obviously made me stay with him like stay mm-hmm. with detroit as well big factor in that and i think that's a really cool thing in your story is like like even when Grand Rapids wanted you back, Michigan Bucks wanted you back, you have like from the external factors of people really wanting you and promising, oh, we're going to go League yeah. One, we're going to go Championship, we're going to yeah. do this. It's really easy to be like, oh no, oh, I'm going to listen to the people that are like trying to tempt me to go to these other yeah. teams. Yeah. And it's like, it is true in the game. There are, there's so much stuff that's thrown around stuff, lie, not lies, but just like, um, there's just a lot of promises yeah. thrown around. And I think it's really good to find people that you really trust and that yeah. are loyal to you yeah. and then to be loyal to them. So yeah. if that's Trevor, that's Detroit city, if whoever, yeah. it's like, if you find those really good people in your life to like show them the same loyalty. Back. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, for me, it's like my agent now, like yeah. Godwin at OPSM pro the amount of agents I went through at the beginning yeah. and then didn't work out for one reason or another. And then he, he just was Honest stand up guy, really good guy, helped me, yeah. like was there for me in my really, really low periods of my career. Yeah. It's like now I'm never leaving. I'm gonna yeah. be with this guy until the day I die. Yeah. That's <laughs> that's how I feel with like Trevor and Tiffany. Like they took they took me under the wing. They literally said everything up front and they were like gave me all the opportunities I wanted I could have possibly asked for and then, you know, they took care of me in, in that sense and it was just just having such a high profile guy mm-hmm. be like that close to you, like have that much knowledge. Like the guy recruited R9 to Barcelona like it's like I didn't know that. he's got two Champions League medals it's like how would you not take his word like yeah, anything yeah, like, yeah. and he's not a guy to be a liar either like he's a guy to help help you out in any case where it be like if you're stuck for something in, in person life he'd take mm-hmm. care of you if it's professionally like he'd take care of you like same with Tiffany and stuff like that so I was like I was very comfortable like mm-hmm. I was very happy with uh, that side of stuff you know I would have loved to have been paid millions <laughs> at the same time yeah. but you know that that made it all cool and like you know there's such a buzz around Detroit about um, DCFC and the games mm-hmm. and like all my friends and uh, family in in, Amer- in Detroit that like love seeing how like how like loyal I am to the club I suppose mm-hmm. uh, like one of the staples guys here like me and Nate still here for a long time and he was like they I'm known as the soccer guy now, which is also one of the reasons why it's like, it's really tough to retire because like, you're not the soccer guy anymore. Like, yeah. You know, you're not the professional footballer anymore. It's like, oh, I kind of like being that person, but I wish I got paid more. <laughs> I know. And that's the, like the identity of that is, is so much fun. It's like, and that's the thing too. It's like, like I say it all at the same time, like it's, it's so many amazing things being a pro and like yeah. being even the USL, there's so many terrible things. There's so many okay things. Yeah. And like, it's it's hard and and people are shocked sometimes when you say that you're pro footballer and then you're like how much longer do you want to play and you're like i don't know yeah and then they're like why would you not there's two sides there's some people that are like play until the wheels fall off but yeah. you're like i don't want my wheels to fall off yeah and you're yeah. thinking also too i'm not getting what we said about financially and like yeah. your career yeah. is it going to hurt my family later down the road yeah and on the other side you have people like we well, played in second division why didn't you retire five years ago yeah and you're like it's, well because it's really really fun and i really, really like it's, it it's really like the lifestyle of the the travel all that so professional it's like it's so cool that like that's mm-hmm. that's it it's just like that's what keeps you going because you feel like it you feel like yeah. you're doing good you feel like you're professional like and i think you are a professional but it, a sense like you're not the 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 soccer professional that everyone associates with like you're not ronaldo making yeah. hundreds hundreds of millions or anything like that like because everyone has a perception of you oh you're a professional soccer player you must make millions it's i like, had no. i had a mimi and i went out to lunch with one of her friends in san diego 
and I think this at the time, probably, I don't know what year this was, but I think probably from soccer, I was making 20,000, I'd say for the year, yeah. which I was buzzing about yeah, yeah. because I'm making 20,000 a year from playing, kicking a ball around, yeah. which has been the biggest contract I had. But in the grand scheme of being grown up, that's terrible. Yeah. And yeah, I remember I went that. out to lunch with her and her friend and then it was like, oh, well, I'm not going to buy Mimi's and mine. I might as well just buy hers as well, just to be nice about it. <laughs> so I paid for the lunch and the girl makes the comment and she's like, yeah, she's like, well, the professional soccer players got the, the oh, thing no. and like was saying about how much money I had. I'm like, you have no idea. <laughs> That's my weekly wage right there. <laughs> yeah, this, yeah this, this dinner of $90 is killing it. Yeah. It's killing me right now. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's, it's funny. Like, they just yeah. no idea. No, it's it's like it's a it's a good wage these days. But I mean, yeah. early championship stuff I heard was rough. Yes. Um, like like I said, like I I, w- I don't think I would have been in a situation be- if it wasn't for my wife doing so well in her profession mm-hmm. that like she's like vicariously living through me because she played soccer her whole mm-hmm. life and she was a big soccer and she we watch Premier League every weekend together. Like she's big into like soccer, so she's my biggest critic. Like kind of thing. <laughs> I come off the pitch, she said you crap today and i'm like thanks like you know, thanks <laughs> but she's like so this kind of the backing i have is just which is great like so it's not it's, i'm not doing it for the money at this stage you know yeah. i'm doing it because like i love playing for detroit and i love playing like soccer at this level like mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. but it's yeah it's it's an interesting mix of of just there we're yeah just there <laughs> we're enough. just we're almost there, just there. Like, if it i'll was, do this for another 20 years if it was but. just any lower i I don't, no. know. I don't know. And if it was just me higher, it's completely different. Yeah, exactly. It's really interesting. It's, yeah. um, so, okay. So now like going forward, like looking forward, what do you want to do when you're all done? Um, that's a tough thing. Cause I'm not like, like I could went back to school. I could went to masters, but I was like, once I was done with school, I was all, again, mentally checked out. Yeah. School was done for me. Um, but if it was something to do with like, um, more certs, like, like right now I've like, I've been with my wife for a long time. She's been a hard, job for a long time which is like a family owned construction company that has like full maintenance all that stuff kind of uh, and I'm known all the bosses and known the owners know everyone and every year they're like when are you going to come work for us when are you go come work for us it goes oh one more year friends. Like, one more year friends. Like, because oh, we're here when you're done we're here when you're done because whatever you want to do and he's like you want to be a project manager you want to be a tradesman you want to be an electrician you want to be like hate track or stuff like that because like I'm more of a DIY hands-on mm-hmm. not like set the computer kind of enter data kind of thing like I need to be like out there talking to people you know doing something with my hands kind of thing like um so it's kind of up in the air that like i don't know uh but i do have some sort of like a couple of weeks ago i was talking to someone about being um an electrician because i like like i said like working with my hands rather mm-hmm. than being at a desk and use so that was one option and it was the, the hvac route that i was going to like look into as well um and then like there was the project management as well, which is just basically running projects and stuff, mm. which which would be cool as well. I don't, I don't have to be, fi- be physical to be doing that anymore. Because again, I don't know how my body's going to take, mm. how long more is my body going to take because of like my knees, arthritis and stuff like that. Like, so being in a tradesman kind of situation is going to, might be tough for me, mm-hmm. but I don't know, but it's something that I like. Uh, but like I said, it's, it's probably one of the other reasons why I keep playing one more year is that I don't know. <laughs> I mean, like there's a lot of, a lot of things out there and a lot of things that people say I should be doing, I should do like, you know, um, you'd be good at this, you'd be good at that and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. It's like, but I don't know anything about that. Or I don't know whatever. Mm. So I have like, like I said, talking to the owners of my wife's job and stuff like that. They're like, whatever you want to do, we'll take care of you kind yeah. of thing. So I'm very, very lucky in that sense that like, I do have like something to fall into if, if that's the way I want to go. But again, like I want to, I don't want to, I don't want to like, like I say, my whole life been pushed into this next mm-hmm. step, this next mm-hmm. step. I want to be able to maybe like branch out more and see mm-hmm. what else is out there. Like apply for way or more jobs than I should be applying kind of for. Um, but yeah, right now I'm, I'm going to be starting doing like um, these certs for project management and maybe even do some training for like some um, trade stuff um, mm-hmm. as well. But yeah, it's just so up in the air. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, avoiding that decision for so long, it kind of made it worse. Uh, it should have been like proactive in this stuff. Like a lot of guys are proactive. They mm-hmm. get like their realtor licenses. They get like commercial real estate like Matt Lewis did. Um, a lot of stuff like that on the site. But I was just playing ball and just watching TikToks. Every <laughs> <laughs> so I'm traveling, watching uh, watching TikToks when I should be like, you know, what? I've got a couple of hours here. Why don't I just do something productive? <laughs> Remember, I tried to learn Spanish. I paid eighty bucks for Babel, and then I haven't opened it since. It was like last uh-huh. year. Yeah, should have been productive. 
<laughs> should have been productive last uh, five years of my career. Okay. I mean, still, it's still, I mean, you got options, which is good. Yeah. Okay, I got two more questions for you okay. and then we'll end it. Okay. Um, this next question is, it's a fan question. Okay. From Rutsy. A fan? Yeah. From Rutsy. Oh. Yeah. He wants to know, actually he already knows, but he told me to ask about your proposal story. He said there's, there's something oh, funny with it. Yeah. It's just awful. Just awful. <laughs> um, yeah. So when I, First of all, like obviously me and my wife got married like when I finished college in long in twenty nineteen. Um we were we were already together six years. We were we were just waiting for the right moment when I was out of college, she was finished her masters and stuff like that. Like but we were together for six years at the time, so it was like we were going to get married, it's just a matter of time. Mm-hmm. Um I had something wrong with my visa to stay for another year. Um so we got married in the courts before we did any of the the, the wedding stuff and stuff like that. So I I didn't feel like that was sufficient enough to like, you know, get married to someone. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I'm still going to do a proposal and stuff like that. Like, so we went down to this waterfront bar that's in, uh, down in Wynat in my place and has like a rooftop and you can see this Detroit skyline is literally underwater. You could pull up a boat to it and stuff. Wow. <clears throat> really nice summer day, perfect weather. Uh, and I was telling, I called ahead, told them all this stuff. I had the ring and stuff like that. We went to got lunch and there's the top patio was uh, closed. But I said, can you keep it closed? And I, we're going to get proposed up there and stuff like that and just need someone up there uh, to like, you know, make sure everything is sorted and stuff. And so finally it came to the time where we had to get off the table and go up and say, you want to go get a picture upstairs and stuff like that? It was the 4th of July weekend actually. And um, we went up there and some somehow some other couple decided to follow us, right? So this other couple came up there. was like, oh, we just want to see this and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I was just so like nervous, even though like we already like, like legally married like so i was like still like didn't want it i didn't like doing it in public kind of, i don't know why <laughs> so anyway i got they was there it was they were taking too long so i was like oh gee, i gotta do it like because this is getting getting awkward this we're up here for no reason kind of thing so anyway i was just pretending to go down and fix my shoe or whatever and i took the ring out and i was saying i was like took the ring out and looked at her and the guy was taking pictures of us like and stuff like that and i just absolutely froze <laughs> i said nothing like for about six seconds, I'd say there was nothing. I was just like, <laughs> you forgot the words. I just froze. Couldn't say anything. Could you, nothing come out. A, did you have a speech planned or anything? Or I, just, well, I had a gist. Like I was obviously going to, but yeah. the end of the gist was saying, will you, will you marry me? At least yeah. like, at least get that out. <laughs> nothing. Nothing came out. Completely froze. She just looked at me and she's like, uh, yes. And I'm like, thank God. Here we go. Oh. I was like, oh my God, that was terrible. And I never to this day, forget it because i was just like why did nothing come out like why <laughs> why did nothing come out i could see it in my head but it wouldn't come out i was like i've never had that experience in my life it's before. funny because like for me like when i proposed to mimi like, i had practiced i just didn't want to speech but yeah. i had two lines i was gonna say yeah like i love you so much will you marry me yeah. that's it and i practiced that just in my head like 20 times before nah. actually saying it yeah but <laughs> you just did you say it? Did you get I, to say it? It was good, yeah. Okay, yeah, good. I didn't. I don't know what happened. I yeah. just completely just blanked. And I was just looking. And I think it was because I could see the couple behind her at the corner of the, yeah. the stairs. I'm like, but they obviously know what I'm doing. So I was like, why don't you just ask anyway? And I just It's just the stopped. something through a wrench in your system and you're focused on that. Your yeah, brain's yeah it, was, it was honestly the most awkward thing in my entire life. And I was like, she just looked at me and was like, waiting for me to say something. And I was like, oh. I, 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 I so basically and Tula she went from carrying up the stairs crying on one of the first impressions yeah. been with you through that yeah. you can't propose right she's, no. she's tolerated a lot uh, yeah I mean <laughs> I've tolerated too she's not no saint myself <laughs> I tell you that much we go back and forth for sure yeah. but yeah it's, it's it was like yeah it was terrible it was honestly one of the things that I fully regret like, <laughs> I, I might have to do it again like, that's how bad it was like you know a 10 year anniversary or whatever third time's, like, third time's the charm 10 year like get a new ring and stuff like that mm-hmm. and just like, let's, let's try this one more time <laughs> I like it alright so last question now and before we end the pod uh, a lot of a lot of people watch this they'll be like DCFC I don't want to make this seem like it's a big podcast it's not that big of a okay. podcast but I'm saying like the people that watch it are going to be a lot of DCFC but a lot of them are kids that want to basically fall in your footsteps and become a pro yeah so I always like to end if you had like one piece of advice that you could give to your younger self or give to all the kids that are watching that want to be a pro what would you say to them to help them follow in your footsteps um to follow in my foot um i would say push yourself um put yourself out there don't be afraid of rejection kind of thing uh it's probably one thing that that kind of hindered my career that like i never 
push myself out there I get myself out there to make a name for myself to mm-hmm. to to maybe even go MLS after college kind of thing uh, I know a lot of guys do that um, you know in high school and college they like go to all these camps go to ID camps you know stuff like that and get agents early it's like put yourself out there for sure because like there was a few times in my life that I could have gotten you know further like I was invited to that uh, Columbus crew one that during the summer and I think Ben Pearman told me not to go it was a waste of time because we had a game of that that weekend it was like that's something I could have done mm-hmm. could have got my name out there and maybe things would have been different uh, maybe someone would have seen me kind of thing so yeah put yourself out there it's like if it works out it works out it doesn't it doesn't like sometimes it's just the way it is like you know um, but yeah if you don't give yourself a chance I don't think you're not going to go anywhere for sure I like that. Yeah. Well, uh, I really appreciate you coming on, Steve. Sorry no about problem. the first uh, mishap with the first take, <laughs> yeah. but I appreciate you sticking this, around. Why is this amateur? Oh, come on. I, I mean, it's this all solo run. You're seeing it. Yeah. But really appreciate your time. Um, it was a long one because of that yeah. mishap, but Sweet. appreciate it. Thank nope. you for coming on. Cheers. Guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Bye. Cheers. Cheers.